Hey friends, tonight I wanted to go over sidechain compression, and I, I know that every single YouTube channel that you see that does this kind of thing has a sidechain compression tutorial. Um, what I found is that there's a lot of in misinformation out there, and there's a lot of confusion as to when you actually would want to use sidechain compression and why you would want to use it and when to apply it. So I see it as there's three different situations that you'd want to use sidechain compression for. Number one is that an instrument is losing its impact. Okay, like there's, for example, a kick drum and a bass line. The bass line is playing in the same frequency range as the kick drum. And because of that, when the kick drum hits while the bass line is playing, it's not as loud or doesn't have as much punch as it would if it was being hit by itself. Okay. The second reason is that you might have frequency buildup issues, especially in the low end where, let's say, once again, we have the kick and, and the, the bass line and they're being hit at the same time. And because of that, you're getting volume spikes and you're not able to uh, keep your volumes in control. So when you go to limit your track later, your tracks are just going to end up sounding quieter. If, you, if you're one of those people that always wonders, like, well, how can I get my mix louder and, 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 and sound loud like these other artists? Well, likely sidechain compression can do a lot for you. And then number three, Another reason you want to use sidechain compression is for creativity. You can make a lot of really awesome ducking style effects with sidechain, and I just don't see that being talked about. So anyway, let's just dive right in. I've made a bunch of examples here, and let's go ahead and just listen to this first example. I'm going to turn off this compressor. Okay, so what we've got going on here is we've got a bass line and we've got a bass line that's kind of held out. Like, see, see the, it's constantly going, right? And we have a kick drum. And, and what I'm noticing, this is a classic situation. And this is the first example I want to show you is a very classic situation. So, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to delete this compressor and I just want you to know. So we've got negative 88 decibels over here, okay? That's how high our, our dB is going. That, that's how much decibels we're trying to push out the master track, okay? Just keep that in mind for me. So I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna grab a compressor and I'm gonna drop it on the bass track because what I wanna do is every single time the kick drum fires, this kick drum, every single time it fires, I want it to remove the bass line from the mix, okay? Just for the time that the kick drum is being hit, okay? so. The first thing you do is you click this little arrow right here, all right, and you hit the side chain button. You got to turn it on, okay? You got to you got to make sure it's active, okay? And then you want to select where the audio is coming from, and this is where things can get a little complicated. If you have a drum rack uh, where your kick drum is living, you have to select the drum rack, and then you have to go into this this other menu, okay? You have to select that kick drum. They give you a bunch of different options here. I'm just gonna choose the the, the pre-fader option, okay? This is pre-effects. If you have any effects on your kick drum, it doesn't matter. This is just, what we're using is the kick drum to trigger the compressor to duck the volume, okay? Now, the next thing that you can do is you're, you, you're gonna wanna set your compressor settings, okay? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna raise the ratio up to like almost a limiting level. Because I don't need, I mean, there's, there's, there's really no reason not to do this, okay? Like, in, in this situation, I want, when the kick drum hits, especially in this harder, so this is kind of like a hard style, like, I guess you could almost, like, think of this as, like, EDM. So, in this situation, I want a really, really, I want the bass to almost just go away when the kick drum happens, okay? So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn that all up, and then I'm going to turn my attack all the way down, okay? And... My release, we're going to talk about this in a little bit, but but in this situation, I'm going to turn my attack all the way down and my release all the way up. So now when I play this, I'm just actually just going to mute this for a second. Just to listen, okay? Now you can see that because I've selected sidechain and the kick drum, you can see the level coming in there, okay? That's the kick drum, right? But I'm sitting on the bass track, okay? This is the bass track right here, okay? So I'm going to turn it on. So now I'm going to pull this threshold down so that whenever the kick drum hits, it's pushing down the volume of the bass. All right, so that's a very simple, basic sidechain compression. Now let's look at the benefits and let's listen to the benefits. And I hope that you're using uh, headphones or a high quality listening device because a lot of this sidechain stuff is happening in the low end and you really need to be able to hear that. Okay, so this is without it. So, so what I hear is the kick drum sounds muddy, 
There's just, I don't hear the, the impact. It's not pushing my chest. It doesn't feel very, very strong. Listen to the difference when I turn on the compressor. I'm gonna do it off, then turn it on. Here we go. Now just listen to that body of the kick drum come back into the mix without it. With it. So yeah, that's a huge benefit. Now, the next thing I wanna look at is, look, we had a negative, almost a, just a, a minus one dB at the master bus, okay? Now, if I turn this compressor on, we're not getting as much frequency buildup now, so, so watch this other amazing benefit. So that's, that's where it is, negative 88. When I turn this on, look at that. Negative three, we've gained two decibels without any perceivable volume difference, okay? So you wonder how to get your, your tracks louder? You, you can't have that frequency buildup. And, and frequency buildup always happens in the low end or low mids. So it's really important to look at this. I mean, you could also get your track really loud if you just scooped your low mids or, or scooped your lows, but you don't want that. You want those big, thick, punchy, low end kind of sounds. And, and sidechain compression, that's, it's, just, it's just night and day if you can learn how to use this properly. Okay, so let's go over a couple really other really quick things before we move on to example two. Now, a lot of people will be like, I can't believe he has his attack all the way down. Oh my God, like that, nobody does that. Okay, look, I'm turning my attack all the way down and what's, what's gonna happen is there's gonna be some click sounds, okay? When the compressor is acting that fast, it's cutting the wave off um, at, at really, really sharp degrees. So you're gonna get kind of an, a, a, a click sound. Listen to the, just the, the bass line by itself. Hear that? Okay, now, why don't I care about that? Well, the, the, the most important thing that I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get the front end of that kick drum, the very beginning transient of that kick drum to snap at me. I want to hear it snap, okay? So I have my attack as low as I can get it. I can't hear that, that clicking sound, okay? I can hear it right now, but when I engage my, my, uh, my drum line, I can't hear it, right? Sounds fantastic, okay? Now, if you're in a situation where you have some softer sounds, okay, this is where you want to start backing your attack off a little bit so you can get that click away. Okay, as you can tell, there's a little bit less there. I mean, and we're talking like, you know, a couple milliseconds here, all right? You pull that up, you can get those clicks. So if you find yourself running into those clicking sounds, that's what you can do, all right? All right, so let's just go ahead and move on to example number two, something I don't see on the internet. Sidechain compression is not just for kick and bass, okay? In this situation, what I have going on, and I'll go ahead and turn these off. In this situation, what I have going on is, is this little uh, kind of synth wave jam. <laughs> Okay, and uh, just <laughs> real quick shameless plug, I'm using uh, my Serum presets that I made with my, uh, I made the, uh, the wavetables that I loaded into here with my modular synthesizer. So um, if you're interested in stuff like that, you can check out the link um, if you like the sounds that I'm using. So anyway, um, yeah, I have this little synth wave jam and, you know, it's fun. It's fun, it's, it's a cool little jam. But something that you can do with sidechain compression that's really fun is you can add like a rhythmic element to what's going on. So what I have here is I'm gonna enable this, this uh, sidechain routing that I have going on here where I'm just, this is the snare track, okay? So before I, I even play that, I'm just gonna play the snare track along with it. So I just have this snare. But instead of having that snare come out into the master bus, I'm just gonna mute it and instead I'm gonna sidechain and I'm going to grab the snare as the as what's feeding the sidechain compressor. Okay? Now you can see my settings here, all right? So what I'm doing is now when I when I engage this sidechain. I hope some of you are having an aha moment, like, wow, you can use, you can use um, other, other tracks, you can use uh, drum loops that you find to rhythmically duck your other tracks.
Okay, and then going along with the theme that sidechain compressors aren't just for kick and, and bass relationships, what I'm noticing here is that I feel like the snare drum from this from this drum line is suffering. If you listen, the 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 serum pad and the snare drum are making kind of the same frequency ranges. Okay, so I'm going to turn on this uh, side chain from the snare. All right, and tell you what, I'll just yeah. Yeah, I'll just go ahead and, and do it from scratch again, just so you can see how simple this is, all right? I'm dropping a compressor and hitting the arrow, turning sidechain on, going to the input, choosing my drum rack 4, okay? And now I'm just choosing the snare drum, all right? And then I'm turning my ratio up pretty high, turning the attack all the way down, in this example, okay? And I'm going to start backing this threshold off. <laughs> So now I'm going to A-B it, so listen to it, with, listen to the snare drum without it. Here's with it. This is the clarity that I gain from turning on that side chain compressor is just, is second to none. Okay, so when do you need side chain compression? So, so here's another big mistake. I think a lot of people see the power of side chain compression and they're like, Oh man, like then they just start using it everywhere and they'll wreck their mixes and they'll use too much CPU. I mean, it's just the processing that it takes to do this is sometimes kind of intensive, okay? So in this situation, here's a here's a just a here's another jam with an acoustic kit and an acoustic bass, okay? So in this situation, let's go ahead and just and and just and just listen. So in this situation, I realize, and I, I can just hear that I don't need to use sidechain compression, and, and 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 why don't I? Well, the reason is is that the bass line is making different frequencies than the kick drum. Okay, I'm gonna pull up two of these spectrums. Okay, let's go ahead and listen. Let's look at the kick drum. So as you can see, there's a lot of information. Look at this final line. Okay, this final line here, the negative 36 line. This will show you really what frequencies are being made. And, and as you can see, the kick drum has a lot, a lot of information in this low sub range, okay? Now, if I look at the bass line, the bass line is making a lot of frequencies up higher. It's, its biggest peaks are happening kind of like in 80 to, yeah, like 120, okay? You can see that. But it's not making nearly as much low end sub, sub stuff, okay? Don't believe me? Well, check this out. I'm going to go ahead and check this compressor out, all right? This compressor has, it's being fed from the kick drum. Um, I got the attack up just a little bit to get rid of that click, okay? I'm going to A, B this, and let's look at the DB. So before, negative 3.2. When I turn on the compressor, negative 3.2. It's not doing anything, okay? Just so you know, in, fa in fact, I don't even know why it's even louder. But uh, what's interesting is that this compressor, it's not doing anything because there's no reason for it to be there, okay? The kick drum and the bass line are making two different frequency ranges, all right? So it's just really important to, to analyze. Take a look at what's going on. Look at your master bus. Uh, listen with your ears. Like, if you're not gaining anything from using sidechain compression, don't use it, okay? All right, and now we're going to move on to a, a more advanced technique, but one that is going to take your mixes to the next level, okay? Let's check this out. So in this final example, I have some good old drum and bass, all right? And let's just go ahead. We're going to turn off all the compression. Just listen to this. Okay, so um, what we have going on here is a bass line that's held out really long, and we have a, we have a, a, a drum line, and the the kick drum and the bass line are obviously fighting for sub range. They're fighting for low mids. They're fighting. All right. So what you can do is you can just you know you can do your normal side chain. So check it out. And as you can see, we're no longer clipping. That's with it, without it. Here's with it. But 
want you to listen to what I want you to do is listen to the the, the bass line. Listen to how much is being lost. Listen to the fact that the bass line has a lot of treble in it. If I just willy nilly go in here and, and turn on my side chain compressor, you can hear that duck. It goes away. You can hear that like it, it, it the 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 high end doesn't need to be side chain compressed. It's not the high end that we're worried about. It's that low end. So what you can do in this situation is you can download this cool little device um, here called the Frequency Splitter, and I'll give you a link, this link here in the, the description. Um, you can download this little device, and, and you can what you can do is you can, instead of compressing the entire track, you can just put the compressor on the lows, okay? So now I'm going to turn this device on and check this out. Listen to how wonderful that is. We've still got the high end, okay? We're not clipping, we've saved the DB. We've still got the bright high end from the bass line, and it's just beautiful. All right, so without it, clipping too loud with it, nothing's lost. Okay, so I hope this tutorial was really useful to you. Um, if you like this kind of thing, uh, consider subscribing to the channel. Uh, consider supporting the Patreon. Love you guys so much. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.